Fiji, Indonesia, hospitals pushed to the brink because of COVID outbreak after a religious holiday. Fiji volunteers started distributing hot food and providing secondhand clothes to the homeless in Mozambique. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Die Headlines. Let's get started. In Indonesia, the spread of COVID has accelerated as the daily number of confirmed cases exceeded 10,000. Jakarta's hospital capacity is seriously insufficient, with Ziji Hospital in Indonesia also having no vacant beds. Take a look. In Indonesia, after the Alta factor, the pandemic has increased severely, with the total number of confirmed cases exceeding 2 million. In Jakarta, the number of the confirmed cases in one day exceeds 7,000. The medical capacity of the major hospitals is about to collapse. The Pandemic Prevention Center of Ziji Indonesia Hospital, which opened just over half a month ago, had all the best field. The purpose of Ziji Hospital is to provide patients with the best medical services. However, in the process of caring for patients, medical staff must protect themselves, especially against COVID-19 virus. They must strictly abide by pandemic prevention measures. The hospital arranges seven nursing staff to take care of the patients in the intensive care unit in shifts. It also assists in caring for patients through the monitoring system. The intensive care unit of the Pandemic Prevention Center is different from other intensive care units. We want to reduce the contact between medical staff and patients, so in the ward, we use the CCTV system to assist caring, observe the patient's condition. But when the patient has an emergency, the nursing staff will go in and deal with it. Due to the number of the confirmed patients is rising fast, the Indonesia government has also implemented stricter pandemic prevention measures, hoping that people will work together to fight against the virus. As a country, Malaysia has over 750,000 confirmed COVID cases, with over 900 still battling for their life. The lack of medical equipment has been devastating as Ziji Malaysia chapter donate supplies to a few hospitals. Here's more. In the past year or so, COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc on a global scale. Malaysia City Chapter volunteers remain calm and continue to offer support when needed. During the first stage, we bought them face shields and handmade face shields, PPE and masks for them. In the second stage, since patients' numbers are high and medical equipment are lacking, we are providing needed medical supplies. The third wave of the pandemic began in Malaysia, and an increase in confirmed patient numbers has risen since April of 2021. Patients with severe symptoms are also increasing, which means many of the hospitals around are not equipped to handle this sudden influx of patients and lack medical supplies of all kinds. When Malaysia Tsuji heard of the situation, they began a COVID relief 2.0 campaign in May. We talked to the hospitals directly and asked them to give us an itemized list of what they need. Honestly, all the items are on everyone's list, including the government. This is why there is such a lack of supplies of it on the market. So how to communicate with respect and love so as not to harm them is the biggest challenge of all. Just like putting out a fire when lacking proper equipment, saving lives becomes a challenge. Doctors need the equipment to monitor the patient's status, their heart, their oxygen intake levels and such. Take Pantai Hospital Malaysia, for instance. In the ICU, there are four beds and no oxygen machines. If one of the patients has trouble breathing and there's no equipment to help, then he's out of luck. Tsuji volunteers and team members from each region mobilized to communicate with their respective hospitals. And in just one month, they were able to donate supplies and equipment to the following places. Penang General Hospital, Pantai Hospital in Sungai Patani, Raja Permai Suri, 
by Noon Hospital. COVID Center in Catalan State and Johor Bahru's Sultan Ismail Hospital. As of June 30th, eight more hospitals are still in talks. Suji's donated equipment includes high flow nasal cannula tubing, oxygen tanks, syringe pumps, electric dust filter respirator, vital monitors, hospital beds, and monetary funds to over 38,000 families. This handing over is in need of time and it came in the right time. Majority of the patients, sometimes with the medical therapy, include support with this oxygen, they can recover without getting into ICU. No matter how much of equipment we have, it, it still won't be enough because the cases continue to come in. Patients are very ill. We hope that with better equipment and uh, more facilities, a lot of patients can be helped. On behalf of our hospital staff and workers, we thank Master Zen Yang with all of our hearts. Thank you for your support for us. If we had to purchase this amount of equipment, it would have put a strain on our budget. Suzi has provided us with plenty of love and support, and we will spread that to our medical staff. Volunteers also provided vegetarian lunches for the medical staff to take care of their health and as a way to thank them for their dedication during this time. Also, a countrywide donation campaign has begun where volunteers are inviting members of the public to gather their thoughts and prayers for the frontline healthcare workers so we may soon see an end to this pandemic. This week, the Moderna vaccine began to be distributed as Zhiji opened five Jingsa halls in New Taipei City to be used as vaccination stations. Zhiji volunteers staffed these locations, showing their care for the community. Take a look. The temperature outside this Jingsa hall under the bright sun soared to 38 degrees. But this did not stop the eeriness of the elderly waiting for the vaccine. In Xindian alone, there are 1,300 people making appointments in a single day. Volunteers from the hospital and the local area mobilized a lot of manpower to serve the people. Our volunteers have assigned manpower for each area to cooperate with the medical and administrative staff to do the service like this. We are tightly wiped all over with protective clothing, so we must use our eyes and voice to let the people know that we are sincerely serving them. Waiting under the hot sun can be too hot to bear. Zizi volunteers also tried every means possible to help people cool off. In addition to adding more tents, they also brought in large electric fans. Because it's too hot for us, so we prepare electric fans to blow on everyone and help cool them from the heat. Seeing these people not being that hot also makes us feel a little more relieved. The same caring service was also found at the Banchal grounds. In addition to placing huge fans, volunteers also prepared large ice cubes to prevent the elders from feeling unwell due to the long wait. Because the weather is so hot, we put some ice cubes in front and let the fan blow on it to make the wind cooler. It will help calm the people who are waiting so they won't feel so nervous. When I came to report here, I felt that everyone's attitude was very good. They are all very friendly. If we do not know about anything, they will help us fill in the information. It's all very good. In the waiting area, physicians from Taipei Zhiji Hospital checked on the daily health condition of each elderly with a friendly style. It's really tiring and very hard, but I think this is the responsibility of our medical staff. We hope we can help everyone hurry back to a normal life and allow everyone to have immunity so we won't be restricted by this virus all the time like this. Increasing vaccine coverage has given people more peace of mind. It's also built a protective net in the community so that everyone can take a step towards returning to a normal life. The COVID pandemic has led many to stay at home as Taiwan's e-commerce turnover last year set a new high. However, every online product needs to be packaged with a large amount of material, leading to serious pollution. One company has developed recyclable packaging materials to cut down on waste. As soon as the online shopping package arrives, one can't wait to open the box immediately. 
you want to get to the goods, you have to go through layers of packaging first. Worrying about goods being damaged during transportation, these protective airbags fill the entire carton, and the packaging material is much larger than the real item it protects. Taiwan produces hundreds of millions of online shopping bags or boxes each year. For example, the packaging material inside or the protective bag outside. It may actually be mixed with some other materials or dyes, and in the end, it will become a single-use item of garbage. According to a survey conducted by the Statistics Department of the Ministry of Economic Affairs, the impact of the pandemic last year, with many staying at home, led turnover in e-shopping to exceed 240 billion NT dollars, setting a new high. It's estimated that 120 million units of packaging were used in one year, which led to carbon emissions are nearly 170,000 metric tons. I used to be a seller of 3C accessories, selling mobile phone cases or Bluetooth headsets. A lot of time, there would be three or 4,000 packages every month, and my house was full of cartons and plastic bags. When e-commerce started, he saw the environmental burden of online shopping. This packaging company founder, Ye Wei led a team to develop recycling packaging materials. Anti-collision, scratch-resistant, water repellent, and made from recycled plastic bottles. Three different sizes of recycling packaging materials are made to be used by online shoppers. Each item of packaging material can be reused 50 times, which not only greatly reduces the amount of garbage, but also saves packaging costs associated with e-commerce. For example, our manufacturing cost, if it is around three U.S. dollars, but it can be recycled 50 times, so the cost can be reduced to just a few cents. Our selling price may cover cleaning and recycling costs, so the price we give to the e-commerce company may be 30 U.S. cents, but the average price for cartons is just a little more. The packaging material they designed it is actually very convenient to use. For our warehouse, it is actually quite simple to put by something in and post it. After receiving the package and taking the ship product, consumers used to discard the packaging directly. But now they have a chance to change this wasteful habit. Later, the recipients can take this recycled packaging material to a designated return point and use a phone app to scan the QR code to complete the return process. Combining with physical storefronts, which can lead to hundreds of return points, this integration of online and offline return of packaging material can allow consumers to earn discounts. Well, I want a cup of wish elixir. I have a one US dollars discount coupon. Some people will be interested in our store after returning the packaging because we put a collection box over there. After looking at our menu, they will come in and play board games. Successfully recycling used packaging materials is the most ideal state, but they are afraid that some packaging materials will never be returned. The key to how to improve the return rate is to allow consumers to choose spontaneously when online shopping. The return rate can be increased to more than 80 percent, but if he is not allowed to choose or consciously do this, the return rate will actually be less than 40 percent. We are actually 85 to 90 percent as it fluctuates. According to data, each packaging material that is recycled can reduce carbon emissions by 1.3 kilograms. If the industry recycles 10,000 pieces per year on average, which is equivalent to a reduction of 130 metric tons of carbon emissions per year, which is environmentally friendly, the effect is visible. But if the willingness of e-commerce companies to cooperate is not high, it will be difficult to achieve the goal of waste reduction. Germany actually has mandatory requirements that you have to declare the quantity of your packaging materials and pay the cost of recycling. So I am suggesting that Taiwan can use this policy to guide companies to bring about change. The government has to offer policies and adopt a multi-pronged approach instead of just resorting to slogans to reduce online shopping packaging volume. These are practical actions we can take to protect our planet.
ZG volunteers started distributing hot food and providing secondhand clothes to the homeless in Mozambique, with many vegetables coming from the dye farm. Here's more. The previous homeless boy is now a diligent farmer in that I farm, and he would share the harvests of fruits and vegetables with homeless individuals. As to the concentrator on hosting disaster relief for Cyclone Idai, they suspended the care for the homeless individuals. Now, because of the pandemic, there are more homeless individuals, and hence to the resumed hot food distribution again. They will get cold at night, they are suffering, so we mobilize to cook hot food for them. Not only providing hot food, the thick jack has donated by the U.S. Embassy also came in handy. It's winter, the homeless individuals will feel cold at night, as most of them don't have thick clothes, so the young volunteers mobilized to help them. A group of volunteers, including young ones, went to the most lively streets in Maputo with hot food, which has been missed by the homeless individuals for a long time. If Zigi does not provide hot food tonight, I don't know what to eat. I may not find food and go to bed with an empty stomach. Apart from gratefulness, I don't know what to say. Under the dim street lights, there is warmth and love flowing around. Here, there are not many people willing to help others, so I'm very grateful to the people who help them. I hope we can continue our food distribution. The ones who will benefit the most are us, as we have the chance to give. Mozambique is one of the poorest countries in the world, and yet volunteers in this country took the initiative to help those in India. Although they don't have money, they donate their own rice and their own harvest. Take a look. We heard that Master Zeng Yan is very concerned about the global pandemic, especially India. Seeing the disaster in India, we don't know what we can do, so we started the Bamboo Khan Bank. They carried the bamboo cone bands and a master's photo as they went to the Dai farm to appeal to our volunteers to donate coins if they have. But some people said they were very sorry for not having money. Yet they brought harvests from the farm. These puppy nuts are growing by myself. The master said this is also giving. Although it's really little, I hope this food can also help the suffering people in India. After learning about the pandemic in India, I'm very sad. But I almost have nothing. I can only donate a little corn flour because in Mozambique, we really don't have much. I have no money to donate, but my farmland has a little harvest. I hope these corn kernels can help India. The volunteers in the South are also very wise. Although they don't have money, a volunteer asked if he could donate rice instead. Then one, two and three, accumulating a total of 27.5 kilograms of rice. They are 
，可是呢，要给予他转贫为富，他们已经富了，可以救人呐、啊。In 2019, the three countries of East Africa experienced the worst tropical cyclone in a century, Cyclone Idai. Such a huge disaster also brought us great blessings. In Mozambique, we have completed the first phase of emergency supply distribution. At the same time, after July, we will launch the medium to long-term assistance program. We have received love from 55 countries around the world. So this time, they have learned to spread our love, spreading love to India. When they saw the pictures of India, they said, Whoa, that place is more difficult than us. We should find a way to give. Although we don't have a lot, we are happy to give out what we have. They really experienced what the master has said before. Once the compassion is activated, the love is endless and can be given out. In the United States, Inland Zixiao held a graduation ceremony. One of this year's highlights was an online tutoring program linking them with rural elementary schools in Taiwan. Here's more. The graduates received red trophies and blessings. This year in Lan Cixiao completed a super mission during a difficult year and was affirmed by the Presidential Award. Why can't I do it in rural areas? I certainly encourage it. He also mentioned to me that it was only in the Penghu area that was called rural area. The demand in Penghu is better than our current place. Because of COVID-19 quarantine, it's impossible to go out. Online classes at home connect with children in remote areas of Yilan, Penghu, and Taidong. Whether it's contacting and tutoring classes, it's all arranged by Cixiao. What they did actually touched me very much, and they are very talented. From contacting the principal to the children, they have designed a whole set of lesson plans by themselves. Chris has benefited a lot. Not only does he find self-confidence, kindness, and responsibility, he also knows how to cherish and be grateful. They give a lot, but they also get the most. Cixiao has really taught me the importance of being aware of all your surroundings and how to make the best out of any situation. And without that, I don't think I'd be the person. And I found myself signing up for more and more sessions and trying to squeeze in um, more time so that I could help out these students because it was truly a great experience. The interaction between the United States and Taiwan did not stop at the end of the semester. Instead, it was planned to expand. Cixiao from all over the states will continue to do it. COVID patients frequently suffer side effects from the viruses. Doctors recommend, as long as they are in stable condition, they can start rehabilitation, such as riding stationary bikes in the hospital and at home. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.